Well, today is interesting because I want to talk about a very famous director who died yesterday. His name is John Singleton. So sad. First big movie. You remember The Boys in the Hood? I totally do. That was the first thing that came to mind when I heard his name. That was the first time you saw black people on TV. <laughs> <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was all about that movie. That was a great movie. Yeah, I mean, Cuba awesome. Gooding, mm-hmm. Morris Chestnut. I mean, you look at the list of people that yeah. were in that movie. Ice Cube. And that was some of their first times. Mm-hmm. Think about that. Their first times, and John Singleton was this young guy yeah. who did this movie and went on. He did Poetic Justice. I remember that one, too. That was a good oh, one. Yeah. yeah. A whole bunch. Yeah. But what saddens me mm-hmm. and why I wanted to talk about John Singleton yeah. is because I want to talk about the African-American community. Okay. Uh, specifically. Yeah. Doesn't mean that we're not talking about, you know, the Latinos or Hispanics right. or the Italians or the Filipinos. The Filipinos. <laughs> right. You're not excluding. I mean, all of this like relates, it pertains to everybody. Yes, it does. And let me preface my point there. Mm-hmm. You know how they used to say, um, like I was thinking about this this morning, I was going black on black crime. Mm-hmm. Like you would hear about that, like black yeah. on black crime. Oh, right, yeah. And so I was looking at some data mm-hmm. and I realized that over 90% of black people, okay. 90% of white people, 90% of Latinos, 90% of Filipinos wow. are killed by people of their own ethnicity. So would that mean that we have Italian on Italian crime? Yep. Would that mean that we have, you know, white on white crime? Yep. But for some reason, all of the focus went to black on black, yeah. which makes absolutely no sense because right. every ethnicity, every culture has their own inner right. challenges with crime. Oh, of course, of course. See, I'm, I'm a pretty smart guy. I guess so. <laughs> okay. did some homework this morning, right? <laughs> I did a little homework, but, Dang. you know, I'm sitting back and I'm just looking at people like John Singleton. And I don't know all the details because I don't know him personally. Right. I've been in the room with him a couple of times. Uh, I met him very, very briefly, mm-hmm. uh, and he was very nice to me. Wow. Um, but it just kills me watching so many young people because, mm-hmm. what, two weeks ago, one of my childhood friends died. I know, you know? that's right. 50 years old. I'm so young. Heart attack. So young. So heart attack is killing a lot of people, and many people don't realize that it's associated largely Mm -hmm. with excess fat and that doesn't mean overweight people because you could be thin and have excess fat on the inside right that's a good point yes so i wanted to talk about what people could do Mm -hmm. to remove themselves from the the potential right of their excess fat leading to stroke leading to diabetes, Mm -hmm. leading to all of these these challenges. Yeah, absolutely, because as sad as the situation is, as tragic as it is, is, there's something to be learned from it, right? And we can can learn from it and better ourselves. I mean, uh, 100%. Right. Because here we are living in a world Mm -hmm. where we have, like some people have abundance. They have money. Mm -hmm. They're living the life, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, But yet, they're dying too early. So young. I mean. I mean, some in their 30s, late 20s, it's crazy. And there's no reason for that. Mm-hmm. You know, many of it, I mean, obviously you have cancers. So you have right. the environment plays a role and just yeah. genetics play a, a role. That's true. That's true. Could be handed down. But mm-hmm. my desire for cornbread is not genetics. <laughs> <laughs> my desire for pig feet, mm-hmm. if I was eating that, is not genetics. Right. And I'm not saying that pig feet is bad or cornbread is right. bad. Yeah. But the way we eat, how we eat, mm-hmm. how we move, how we exercise, right. how we think, uh, the energy we have, yep. the amount of times we laugh, all of that plays a big role in our overall health. Right. There's a lot of things that we can control. That yes. We can control. You know, I, I once heard years ago that our lifestyle is like like a gun, right? Uh, oh. a, a rifle. Okay. We can load it, mm-hmm. okay, based on how we live our life. Okay. But it's all about pulling the trigger. Mm-hmm. So... It's one of those things where if you look at what we can do, mm-hmm. many of these diseases yes. could be prevented. Absolutely. And so, you know, I asked you this morning, I was like, hey, Barbara, you know, before we do the show, yeah. just kind of randomly pull up some names yeah. of celebrities mm-hmm. who probably died too young. Right. So John Singleton, blessings to your, your you know, your family. Yes. Uh, Rip, um, mm-hmm. 
much love. You helped a lot of people. He he made a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, without a doubt. And the sad thing is, like you said, you just you Google you Google that information about you know people who have died young, too early. From yeah, and, and make sure you. I want to make sure they hear you. Like oh, so make sure your mic is pointing to you or something. Yeah. You know, I would hate to go back in editing and go, oh, my God, we couldn't hear Barbara. Right. What, what, what did she say? What the <laughs> hell did she say? <laughs> damn it, damn her. No, what I was saying is that, um, is that it's so sad because you can, you know, just go online and Google, you know, people that have died too young, you know, from heart disease and heart attack. And there is no shortage of names. I mean. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, so so give us one. Well, another one. We said we talked we talked about John Singleton, right? Right. Another one that it's actually so funny, but no, not funny. But I remember, you know, growing up and loving his music, Heavy D. Oh, Heavy D. that's right, yeah. Heavy D. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, gone he, way too soon. Yeah, way too soon. He was, and he died of a heart attack as well. And there was people I know people who were very close to Heavy D. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And you know, like I like I work with Chuck D of Public Enemy. Yeah. And good guy. Mm-hmm. And, and let me tell you, Chuck is all about taking care of himself. I mean. Whether he's working out with Pilates, working out, really? just work. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Matter of fact, he's working out right down, right down the street from here. Shoot, that's yeah. awesome. But you know, he's putting in the time. You know what I mean? The yeah. energy to take care of himself mm-hmm. the best he possibly can. Yep. You know, and he knew Heavy D, wow. and a guy like Heavy D would have been a he would have been a perfect client for you or me. Right. Because we would have met Heavy D where he was. Mm-hmm. We could have showed him how he could still entertain. He could right. still eat a lot of his favorite foods. And who knows? I mean, we, we don't know 100%, but I believe we would have contributed toward right. his quality of life. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was young, too. Heavy D. Do you have his age? Did, you, did that pop he's up? 44. Does that sound right? Well, yeah, I think yeah. he was definitely in his 40s. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm older than him now. <laughs> right. So, I mean, that's what's so scary is that, you know, when you're, when you're younger, you, you just take these things for granted. You know, then all of a sudden you start hearing about people who are in your age range or even oftentimes younger than you and you're thinking, you know, I need to pay attention here and make sure, you know, I'm doing what I can do to, like you said, improve my, my quality of life. Right. You know? I mean, but, you know, I totally get like where they are because imagine you grow up poor yeah. or you don't have much. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, you have a good amount of things yeah. and everybody wants to go out and eat. Everybody wants to go and party. Sure. Everybody wants to have that extra drink. Everybody wants to be on plane. You know what I mean? So you live this life where sometimes you don't have time to exercise True. or you believe you don't unless you, yes. you build it into right. what you do. Right. I mean, if it's never really been a habit, if it's never really been part of your lifestyle, then it's hard all of a sudden to be like your life becomes so much more busy. Right. To, and to think, and I think a lot of people believe that healthier living is something that's so extreme. Like they would have to completely give up their life as they know it right for a healthier which in their mind they're like no more happy times yeah. now it's all about eating food that tastes like cardboard yeah and they're like forget it i work too hard to be you know to enjoy life i'm not gonna eat cardboard right and that's what they think but so. we know something a little different absolutely right so yeah. heavy d gone too too soon uh, who else popped up on the list barbara this, this was one that actually um was sad as well i mean they're all sad but i remember watching this movie do you remember the movie the green mile oh yes so the main actor, his name is Michael Clark Duncan. Mm-hmm. He was also 54. 54. 54. You know, I met Mr. Duncan once. Yeah. I was in a restaurant and not a re- it was, it was a restaurant mm-hmm. and a store, which I haven't taken you to and I should. Yeah. It's called Healthy Heart. You ever heard of Healthy Heart? Um, no. Okay. So it's in, it's in the valley mm-hmm. and I used to eat there two, three times a week. Oh, nice. Uh, and they have a grocery store inside. So it's all about health and wellness, right? Okay. And so one day I'm in there Mm -hmm. and I see Michael Mm -hmm. and I see Amarosa. So, you know, the famous, they were an item. Yeah. They were a couple. Yeah. And so they're in there and they were just, it was so cute. You know, shout out to Amarosa, who I've met a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And it was just really, really, really cute because they were playing around, laughing and, you know, doing stuff in the aisles. Right. And, you know, this dude is huge. Right? Right. He's big. Yeah, I mean, he so, what, so it wasn't like he could, he could, you know, he didn't stand out. Right. And I was just like, wow. So I just did a brief, like, hi, what's up? Mm-hmm. And kind of kept it moving. Yeah. But, you know, not too long after that, you know, I don't know, a year or two or three, yeah. um, he dies of a heart attack. I mean. And who knows? I mean, you know, it could be, it could be steroids. Mm-hmm. You know, you have people who would believe that. 
Right. It could be drugs. We've right. lost people because it's a heart attacks because of drugs. Yeah, for sure. uh, so it could be a whole bunch of things, but we all know that taking care of yourself is, is king. It really is. So, you know, rip, you know, to, to Mr. Duncan and his family. You know, he was an, he was an amazing person in my brief experience. Yeah. And of course, he was awesome on TV I mean, and absolutely. movies. Or at least I do. Actually, I need to watch that movie again. Really yeah. It's been a minute, but um, good one, definitely. So. Okay, so who else? Who else? So, all right, here's another one. Anthony Mason. You know who that is? No, I don't. So he's a former NBA player with the Knicks. So he actually also died at, uh, in his 40s as well. Wow. Time. Anthony. Okay, Anthony Mason. Yeah, and you know, I'm a total Laker fan. Especially, well... I mean, I'm still a Laker fan. I'm always going to be a Laker fan, right? But I remember the day, like, you know, with like, Magic and, you know, all that, you know, all those So players. was it that you liked the players or did you like those short shorts they used to wear? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I like the players. I mean, do you remember how short the shorts I mean, were? Yeah, like, when I was getting into, like, really enjoying basketball, the short, the, the length of the shorts were getting a little longer. Okay, good. But, yeah, they were, like, <laughs> Because the guys want to show some leg. I guess. But anyway, <laughs> I remember him. I mean, I wasn't a Knicks fan, but I do remember him. You know, when they play the Lakers, or just in general, Anthony Mason. So his name popped up, too. I was like, wow, him, too. Wow. Yeah. Too short, man. Yep. And, and 48, just... And like you said, you know, these are people who have, you know, amazing careers and, you know, a lot of resources available to them. And um, doesn't, it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't discriminate. No. And, and again, you know, our big disclaimer is we're not saying that it was all about how they ate. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. It's kind of like we right. talked, we did a whole podcast on Jim Fix, right? The first guy to ever mm-hmm. make running popular mm-hmm. uh, and is credited for running the way we see it today, yeah. who went out there and just started running like a real Forrest Gump mm-hmm. and lost all this weight and then became the, the man, you know, yeah. best selling running book. Best selling everything. Everybody yeah. wanted to do work with him. And he goes out and he has a heart attack while he's jogging. And then they do an autopsy and we find out that he was thin on the outside but fat on the inside. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like we stress, don't just go by what you look like on the right. outside. Yeah. What is your health like on the inside? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, we're, you know, and we're not just having a conversation about it just to talk about it. Mm-hmm. We have a solution for people. Right. So... So we're here to like make a difference, make right. make the change, right? Yeah, it's not so much that we're just pointing out an issue or a problem. I mean, we're pointing it out because we have a, like you said, a solution and a way to actually help people. Right. And that's the that's the light, you know, at the end of the tunnel here. The, the light. Silver, the silver lining, right? The silver lining. The silver lining. Yeah. I like that. All right, who's next? Let's do it. So I got another one for you, a big one. Oh my gosh, you gotta know this one, Luther. Luther Vandross. Yeah. He had a stroke, actually, right? Mm-hmm. And then Which is exactly what happened to um, John Singleton. Mm-hmm. He had a stroke. Yeah. So, uh, like a lot of times, people don't realize. Let's say that you get on um, uh, blood pressure medication. Mm-hmm. Well, blood pressure me- uh, medication we know that over a long period of time mm-hmm. uh, leads to stroke. Oftentimes, those people have a heart attack. Yeah. They find themselves on dialysis. It's like mm-hmm. one thing leads to the next. Yeah. Whereas many of these people could have avoided a lot of that, even the, the leaner people, yes. if they had done a DEXA scan or knew where the fat was in their body right. and then lived a life where they got rid of the excess fat. Yeah. But Luther, of course, I know who Luther is. Yeah. Any man that doesn't know who Luther is has yeah. done his woman a disservice. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I mean, yeah. And I meet guys that are like, who's Luther? I'm like, what is wrong with you? And then I'll, I'll mention <laughs> other names and they'll go, I'm like, man, poor, poor woman. Poor woman. <laughs> that's messed up. It was true, though. But yeah, that's a, that's another one. His voice is just one of those that you can, and you never forget, right? You just can't miss that. Plus, you know, with Luther, he was known mm-hmm. for gaining weight, losing weight, gaining yes. weight, losing weight. Yeah. Which plays does a, a big like like oftentimes you'll hear someone yeah. say that's not good for you, but they don't explain why it's not why, good for you. Yeah. Right. And we know why. And I'm not going to go into great detail, mm-hmm. but it ends up uh, putting a person in a position where they will have excess fat, yes. visceral excess fat mm-hmm. around their organs, kidneys, pancreas, yes. you name it. So, mm-hmm. you know, Rip Luther and his family and mm-hmm. 
uh, forever remembered and loved. Yeah, for sure. Um, and next, who's who's next? See, I've got another. I think I have one more. And actually, he actually um, did some work with John Singleton. I think it was in uh, Poetic Justice. His name is Ricky Harris. He's an actor and comedian. Oh, Ricky Harris. Yeah. yeah. He was also fifty-four and died of a heart attack. Ricky Harris was one of my all-time favorite like act i mean comedians yeah, yeah. another in his 50s 54 unbelievable so, so young and then actually when i was reading up on it a little bit and they said that he had done work and in poetic justice mm-hmm. i was like oh, i mean I talk about just like it's so so close together you know well you know they they also say that as you and i mature in life mm-hmm. in the next 10 years we will see more of our childhood friends mm-hmm. leave this earth. So between the ages of 45 and uh, 60, yeah. you start to see it. So our, our friends, like the, the Judy Q's of the world, mm-hmm. they've watched their friends mm-hmm. leave. And many of them who are living, they're inspired to live their healthiest life. Yes, that's true. But then where do you go from there? It's like, let's say you, you want to get healthier, you mm-hmm. start using supplements, right? Mm-hmm. And when I was in Florida recently, I heard some stories. Yeah. And one of the stories was this supplement company was doing really well. And yeah. the next thing you know, they ended up, uh, it was discovered that they were lacing their supplements with cocaine. Oh, my God. So we know that that happens. We know that certain supplements, um, yeah. you, they'll find metals or lead yeah. in some of these supplements. Mm-hmm. And so I always tell people, keep your eye on consumer reports. Mm-hmm. Um Always do some research, go to someone like us or stick with supplements that are validated, right? They're substantiated. Exactly. So that have documentation and studies that that back it up. Right. So, so Rip, you know, Mr. Harris and his family, Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else pop up for you? Let's see. Um, That's all I got. That's all. Well, I don't remember her name. And uh, I told you that I I went online just to kind of pull up some. And, you know, I was a big fan of the Jeffersons. And, um, you know, I met Mr. Uh, Jefferson. Did you really? Yeah. So what was his name? Uh, Hemsley. I think it was his, no. his, uh, his, his name is slipping me. But I was at this, um, I was with a friend of mine mm-hmm. who was in this country club right off of like the PCH when you get into Santa Monica. I think it's the Jonathan Club. And it's st- like if you, once you know that it's the Jonathan Club, yeah. you'll say, man, I pass this place all the time. Yeah. So I'm in there. And we're walking and all I see is white people, which, you know, no big deal. But, you know, when you're when you're black and you notice that it's kind of like you ever see there was a movie called Watermelon Man, I think, mm-hmm. where I forgot the actor, but he was a white guy mm-hmm. and he became black. I don't know right. if it was a dream or something happened. Next, thing you know, he woke oh, okay. up and he was black. So. And so <laughs> when you get to live on that side of it, you're on the other side. you quickly realize, yeah. you know, it's kind of like like let's say I'm on a board, mm-hmm. you know, for a company or whatever. Yeah. And if you look, almost everyone's just white. Mm-hmm. Almost everyone. Mm-hmm. And then there's like that token black guy. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm like, I almost, I almost finished your sentence. I wanted to say token. And I'm not going to say token like they have to do it. But you do, you do notice it on this yeah, side. Right. And I guarantee you that you would notice if everyone was white mm-hmm. and someone who was Filipino yeah. stood out, you'd probably go, oh, wow, well, look, there's a well, Filipino. Yeah, that's true. But on the flip, when I went to the Philippines, and I'm half Filipino, most people don't even think I'm Filipino at all. Right. But yeah, you're right. Like I, I, I was on the flip side. I, I landed in the Manila airport, and I mean, I completely stood out. Like I knew I didn't, you know, fit in with the look of everyone else. And so right. You do become aware of that. You do. And and I guarantee, if you saw a white guy when you were in the Philippines, you're like, he stood out. Totally. And I, <laughs> I felt like, you know, I felt like I was dang six foot tall there. I was like, right. Rocking the height, you know, me on my five four. But but anyway, so I was while I was there, yeah. I saw him mm-hmm. and, you know, brothers, right? Black guys, when they see each other in an environment like that, mm-hmm. there's always a nod. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that but yeah, yeah. It's like, I see you. I see you. Mm-hmm. So we had that moment. And I was like, that's man, funny. that's George Jefferson. So True. I went over and I actually introduced myself, yeah. said hi. And uh, that was it. I mean, I didn't get his number or anything. Right. But didn't he do like a funny dance? And I didn't look uh, maybe you can look him up right now. Like how did George Jefferson die? Because Wheezy, his wife in the movie, yeah. she died, I believe, 
as a result of a heart attack. Oh, so that's what you were. Yeah, yeah so that's where my head was. So okay. I pulled up. She popped up. I was like, oh, man, I never knew that. Right. So you want me to look it up right now? Yeah, right now. Oh, okay. I mean, we Thanks. keep it real. I mean, I, I'm just curious, like, what, how did George no, Jefferson no, no, die? No, phone was nearby. Well, I knew it was nearby. <laughs> I have, like, that skill set, right, you know. Yeah. And, and as you're looking it up, I'll, I'll kind of carry the conversation for there a moment. Right? <laughs> so, but you don't remember his real name. No, I just go, like, what was the name of George Jefferson? And then, of course, it'll pop up and... Uh, Hemsley, I think it was his name or whatever. It'll pop up and then you do your research. But so here, here, here's why we're doing this show, you guys. We're doing this show and having this conversation because this is something that every ethnicity, all people are dealing with, yeah. is that we're leaving this earth too soon. Um, oh, so you found it already? I did. Okay, so go it's ahead. It's not due to heart disease. He was... Uh the complication associated with lung and bronchial carcinoma. Okay. Well, I mean, I was guessing strictly yeah. from the hip because I think if we were to just throw up in the air, you know, African Americans who are famous that have died, right. um, my gut tells me the majority is going to be related to cardiovascular disease. Mm-hmm. That right. that was that's that'd be my guess. Yeah. And I haven't done the research, but it's making me want to do it. Yeah. Uh, sure. Because I'm real big on instead of chasing the effects is to find out the cause and reverse yeah. it. Exactly, right? Right? And so we know mm-hmm. today that 70% of breast cancer is associated with excess fat. Uh, 30% mm-hmm. of all cancers is associated with excess fat. And there's 16 or 18, somewhere around there, right. cancers that are predominantly associated with excess fat. Right. Now, check out this data. This data. When I was preparing to do some work with uh, Susan G. Coleman, mm-hmm. uh, I went there, did a whole presentation for them, oh, um, nice. and never told you that, huh? No, you didn't. <laughs> okay. yeah, did so I was at headquarters in Dallas, yeah. and I shared with them data that they had absolutely no clue about, was which was kind of sad. Mm-hmm. It was 40%, this is according to the CDC, okay. 40%, mm-hmm. okay, sorry, age 40, 82%. Actually, 83% of African-American women over the age of 40, 40 okay, okay um, are overweight or obese, living with excess fat. Wow. 77% of Latinos, okay, mm-hmm. um, age 40 and over, so, okay, 40 exact same okay. situation. The reoccurrence of breast cancer after you've had it once, is largely associated with excess fat. Wow. Now, knowing that, my big question to Susan G. Coleman right. was, what are you doing for these women that show up? And I largely saw, like, they, they, they ran a, like a video for me on mm-hmm. like, testimonials. Okay. And predominantly, yeah. the testimonials were African-American women. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm seeing a lot of African-American women that they're featuring and highlighting. Okay. I have a mom who, and an aunt who both have had breast cancer. Mm-hmm. My mom twice. They both are totally encouraged, excited, totally engaged with participating in Susan G. Coleman's events. Right. But when I ask my mom and when I ask them, what are you doing to help these women after you do the events? After the walk, after the fundraisers, What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing right now. And I've been there. I talked to him. I was like, look, I'm here to potentially collaborate and make something available for all these women you get to come to support your events. They raise all this money. What can we do together? I'm all about reversing the cause, helping them after. After. You guys are all about raising money to do research, but you're not helping the people right now. That's a huge point. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. And fortunately, you know, that's why I don't support Susan G. Komen. And if they were to change their ways, then be great. But my definition or how I look at Susan G. Komen is I look at them as dumbasses. Because once you put the truth in front of someone, an opportunity to give more. And you choose not to engage, right? You're a dumbass. Exactly. I mean, sorry. You, 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 <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Like information like that too, that's so powerful and really.
really hits home for the people that you're supposedly serving. I mean, you should be all, all about that, like all about trying to incorporate some program or some kind of methodology that will help these women no. after the fact. No. that's when they need it. But you know? they are just one example of many who's out there talking a the big talk, mm-hmm. but they definitely are not doing the, doing the walk. That's really eye-opening. You know, years ago. And they know my number. Hey, you guys know my number. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Susan G. Hey, if you want to do something, we're here to help. Exactly. We want to, we let's do something together. You know my number. I've been in your office. I pointed this out. I said I would help. I would give back. And all the women who support Susan, uh, Susan G. Coleman, send them an email and say there's a new sheriff in town. His name is Robert <laughs> Ferguson. <laughs> right. You know why that it actually hits home for me too? Because I actually supported one of those walks years ago. It was a group of us when I was in aerospace, and we put a group together and we did the walk at the. I guess it would have been the Rose Bowl. And there's a ton of, I mean, so many mm-hmm. people turn out. It was actually, you know, an amazing Oh, it's a, and I wouldn't stop. Mm-hmm. Like, I like the awareness that they've, yes. they're definitely a thought leader. Yes. However, think a little bit more. Right. Because let's support the women who are there. Yes. Who have experienced breast cancer or they know someone or they just want to make a difference. Right. And now let's empower people mm-hmm. and give them some tools that can help with, what we know to be true, and that is excess fat, mm-hmm. visceral fat mm-hmm. around the organs yep. is directly associated with second and third occurrence right. of breast cancer. Right. Yeah, we're not dealing with like little band aid fixes here. We're trying to go right after. Oh, we're going right after. They're, they're, they're just talking a big talk. And there's a lot of people that are just talking a big talk. Yeah. And sometimes, oh, like well. some of the, the, the ingredients and foods that we take in can play a big role. It's like mm-hmm. one of the reasons why I like you know, this company, Moldare, is because if they're focused on helping with clean living, yeah. right? Yeah. You're now, and you are providing some nutrition guidance, right? Yeah. That and, and information that can help deal with excess fat. Yes. I'm all in. Of course. Because when it's not excess fat, it's our environment, right? Mm-hmm. And so if there's chemicals, shampoo that has ingredients that we believe are associated or linked to, right increased risk of cancer and other diseases and there's a way to get products that don't have those things why why wouldn't you that makes total sense so the fact that they're kind of a thought leader in that space pulls me in because i want to be part of the positive people who are really creating impact that's positive so i rest my case that's right i mean no i i totally agree with that you know, actually, like in my field in aerospace, and I've t- told you several times about that. Is you know, not only were, was I working with employees to help protect their health and wellness, but then I also did work, you know, to protect our environment as well. It's just just as important. I mean, how we what we do, not only to protect it, but to prevent, you know, the impact, you know, on our environment, so that we can actually have a relatively clean environment for our kids and their kids and so on and so forth. Because there's a lot of things. That just accumulate, right? Right. I agree. We don't know. We don't know what that'll do in the long run. So. We don't know, but what we do know is that mm-hmm. we know. Yes. And we ain't going to stop, people. That's right. So, yeah. but thank you. I, and I appreciate you taking the time to do that. That's some good information. Oh, yeah. No, it was, it was, uh, it was eye-opening. You know, like we see these things and we hear about it all the time, but we hear so much information that it's just like, it's, it's like on for a minute and then we're on to the next. And when you're reminded of it, like the gravity of it, how real it is and you know how close it is you know it really hits home well thank you barbara appreciate it all right you guys hey don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so whenever we upload a video on youtube you get notified and if you're watching this somewhere other than youtube then look at the uh, links and information provided so that you can connect with us and follow barbara she's tra- always looking to get more people to follow her <laughs> And like her her pictures. <laughs> and follow me too. I guess I need to start building yeah, that. Anyway. Right? Yeah. Until the next one.